Welcome back to Storytime with Kayfish, uh, Roomba of Doom, Chapter 9. Don't Forget to Recycle, folks, by Gay Demonic Disaster. Uh, just as a recap, Bob the Roomba has a girlfriend, Lydia the Power Mower. Uh, Lydia isn't sure what she should be doing, but Aziraphale finds a way for her to help around the house. Crowley gives, gives Bob another upgrade to help. He then gets a bit of a surprise later on. This is a shorter chapter. Stay tuned for Take Your Vacuum to Hell Day next chapter. <clears throat> Aziraphale settled down at Crowley's ornate red marble desk to do some paperwork, feeling faintly ridiculous in the elaborate gilded throne, but he had plenty of space to lay out all of his invoices and receipts to sort through on the enormous desk. Bob scooted around the room, busily gathering every speck of dust and lint to keep the place stop spotless. Lydia, on the other hand, lingered by the window, looking somewhat confused as to what she should be doing. Aziraphale had an idea. He glanced at the pile of papers on his right-hand side that were now rubbish and called Lydia over to him. My dear girl, I don't suppose you would be a gem and engage your blades again, please. Lydia beeped happily. There was a sound of her clutch engaging and the low hum of her blades spinning, her, spinning up underneath. Wonderful. Now do you think you could help me with this, please? Aziraphale dropped a piece of paper in front of her. Do you suppose you could shred that for me? Lydia ran over the paper, buzzing happily, and within seconds, the sheet was torn into untidy scraps that fluttered out around her in a circle. Aziraphale beamed at her and patted her housing proudly. Such a helpful girl. Would you like some more? Lydia beeped happily and revved her blades a little faster. Aziraphale sat back and slowly fed her the scrap paper, piece after piece. When he ran out of unwanted documents, he fetched the cardboard recycling bin from the kitchen and brought it to go th and brought it through to go through that as well. <laughs> Crowley came home to a swath of shredded, shredded paper and cardboard littering the floor in the study, surrounding a rather satisfied looking lawnmower. Aziraphale looked up from his work. Oh, Crowley, I'm so glad you're home, dearest. I sent Bob to his re recharging station as I didn't want him cleaning this up just yet. I need your help with something. The demon raised a questioning eyebrow, stalked over and gave his angel a quick kiss and a hug. Sure, what do you need, love? Aziraphale indicated the drifts of shredded paper. Lydia has been an absolute dear and has been shredding all the paper and cardboard for me. Initially, I was going to get Bob then to vacuum it all up, but it's supposed to be recycled. It's a little silly to banish it to another dimension where it could be reused. Do you suppose you could do another demonic miracle on him so that any paper or cardboard gets diverted and dumped straight into a recycling facility instead, dearest? Crowley looked perplexed and then laughed. I'm so glad no one keeps track of the miracles I get up to, Angel, because this has got to be one of the weirdest you've asked me for yet. He sauntered through to the lounge to find Bob. There was a snap of fingers. Come on, Hellspawn. Uncle Aziraphale has a job for you. Follow me, kid. Bob wasted no time in circling the room and happily devouring all the shredded material surrounding the mower, who spun in slow circles to watch him. When he'd finished, she nudged the little vacuum affectionately. Nice work, team, Crowley nodded, taking in the now immaculate floor. Okay, Angel, fajitas for dinner? I made some nice salsa the other day to go with. Let me get the ro roti. Let me get the roti pan and make up some fresh wraps. Aziraphale busied himself clearing away his paperwork and watching the two electrical devices chasing each other around the room, beeping happily. Later that night, Crowley woke to hearing a curious snap and sizzle sound from the lounge and, and the occasional revving of little motors. Don't. Don't. He slunk through from the bedroom to see what was going on. He paused in the doorway to take in the scene. First in puzzlement, 
then understanding dawned, then growing mortification and embarrassment. Jesus Christ. His jaw fell open. He realized after a moment that he was still staring, shut his mouth, turned silently on his heel, and crept back to the bedroom, shaking his head in disbelief. <laughs> Well, at least they'd been using a surge protector anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're going to make little spice grinders. Aziraphale rolled over and cuddled his demon. What's the matter? He mumbled sleepily. Uh, don't go in the lounge, love. Bob and Lydia were sharing a charging port somehow. Don't ask me how, but they seem to have worked something out. Aziraphale cranked one eye open quizzically. What? My thoughts exactly, Angel. Best not to think too hard about it, I suppose. Go back to sleep, love. He gave Aziraphale a soft kiss on his forehead and wrapped his long bony limbs around the warmth of the soft cherub, snuggling back to sleep. I got nothing to say. I can't believe you just wrote vacuum mower safe sex. Anyway, thank you for joining me and I'll be back when there's more Roomba.